grabbing uh, video data, um, uh, photographic information, um, high bandwidth data. Um, what are your thoughts um, as representatives of organizations that are um, familiar with handling large amounts of data as to what are the prospects for rapid QA, QC and um, effective opportunity, uh, effective um, uh, technologies for serving up that data to the public and in particular um, when we think of like um, HD data that scientists are going to demand for doing research, um, how one can actually deliver that data uh, to those who might need it in its um, full quality. Okay. Uh, fantastic question, uh, Marcia. And I think uh, in terms of uh, dealing with all of these, uh, I mentioned among the, the four Bs was uh, variety. We had not really had a discussion yet about uh, video data as, as part of that, that B, and that's going to be, I think, very critical. So that's a fifth B. No, it's actually within the B of variety. So in terms of we have <laughs> photographs, videos, text files, uh, points, lines, and polygons of observations, uh, visualizations, uh, scientific models, and so forth. But within all of that variety, we've not spoken that much about videos. And Chris German's uh, comments uh, to that uh, extent were, I think, very pertinent to this. Because with these long archives of, of videos that we want to be able to not only preserve, but also make available very quickly, uh, that's, again, where I think partnership is very important. Because within our academic and government agencies, there's been a lot of work and a lot of funding that has gone into creating these archives, maintaining them, but sometimes the next step is not always easily uh, attainable, particularly if your funding runs out. And so, for instance, with, with Kate's situation with Neptune Canada, where there's been a data management system put into place and you're looking to go to the, the next step, this is where I think the, the public-private partnership can really play a role. Because uh, if you're able to, to work with uh, companies who are actually looking at some of these problems in terms of research. So I'd, I'd like to just uh, step to the side a little bit to talk about uh, how important this is when we think about research versus exploration. Mm -hmm. you know, we've talked about, you know, is exploration part of research? Is there a, a continuum uh, between those two? Are they broad endpoints? If you're an explorer, are you really a scientist? Uh, I think in terms of ocean exploration, the ocean exploration challenges are actually the research questions, the research problems of information technology or data science. So we want those kinds of challenges. And so being able to archive QAQC and quickly disseminate uh, video and other kinds of observations is something that is uh, delicious to Google, to Esri, uh, to uh, our partners, for instance, uh, Marine Explore is a new uh, startup company in Silicon Valley uh, that is building a marine platform. They're even building a marine operating system. And they are working now on specific machine learning techniques to automatically go through and QA, QC, uh, satellite observations. I think it could be applied to video. So I think it's just a matter of uh, getting in, uh, there was discussion of a national huddle. Uh, we could have a data or technology huddle and, and talk about some of these uh, challenges in smaller groups and come up with uh, very useful partnerships uh, to, to solve these problems. Okay, great. Jen? Yeah, I think that all sounds uh, wonderful. And you know, I would say that toward your question, like Google has some tools that can help dealing with large data. Um, and those that aren't familiar with YouTube for video, and there are several groups that, um, like NOAA, and um, the Schmidt Ocean Institute who are using YouTube Live, you know, to record um, a 
and share video from their expeditions. Is it full HD TV? Um, yeah. It has HD, <coughs> yeah. yeah. It is, great. Um, so I think that's a great tool um, and for video um, with regard to analysis. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it can do sort of, you know, automated feature extraction, um, but that would be something to look into. And Chris and I have mentioned that. So um, I think the other thing would be, uh, you know, Kurt has done a lot of work uh, using our cloud hosting infrastructure to upload a large amount of data, specifically looking at um, the space-based AIS chip tracking data, and then using compute engine to do really fast query analysis. So I think that is a tool that he's been working on, uh, a bit of a how-to, uh, how you can do it as well, uh, to come out in the future. And you can see his talk if you look for Google I.O. Uh, Kurt Schwer, who's here in the form of the UNH in the back there. And I'm sure you have you talk with anyone about um, his explorations using our cloud store for handling big data. Um, and there is another tool, Google Maps Engine, which has been used for uh, geospatial data. Um, and Earth Engine is a project where they've looked at uh, cloud hosting large amounts of uh, imagery data. So they um, put all of the Landsat imagery in the cloud to allow scientists to do you know, really fast change analysis where all the forest fires now or the forest cover change. And that's been really powerful you know, analysis that before took months um, they could do in like a day or, or a really short period of time. So I think that whole power of being able to, you know, sort of do queries across, you know, lots and lots and lots of machines um, is, is a future tool that could be really powerful and um, happy to be a part of the story. <laughs> and I think what uh, Jennifer is referring to uh, in terms of the cloud, you know, the cloud is like another one of these terms that may be a mystery term. And I tend to think of a, literally an atmospheric cloud in my head. But we're talking about really a paradigm shift, I would say, in computing and in data distribution. And there is uh, some bit of uh, trepidation about it. But I think it's, it's something that is really becoming more secure, more powerful, and uh, easier to use. And in the information technology world, I mean, we, we are all, I think, going that way. And so uh, the cloud infrastructure uh, is something that's going to be very powerful and uh, I think something that ocean exploration really needs to, uh, to embrace uh, to a certain extent or to at least investigate, be willing to have an open mind to investigate it. Uh, and this is also, uh, it's going to be much more efficient, much faster uh, to the point that I had made earlier about not just moving our data sets back and forth, but actually moving analysis. Uh, the analyses that Jennifer and I have been talking about, moving that to the data once, and then you have your, your outputs uh, from that that can go out much more quickly, uh, including to the general public, and to school kids on their tablets, their phones, and so forth. So let's suppose we're at a point 